Jalen Ramsey, now a member of the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins sent tight end Hunter Long in a third round pick to the Rams who were very anxious to unload Jalen Ramsey's contract, I think also in part. And this part hasn't really been discussed much, but it's hiding in plain sight. We've talked about it before. Yeah, right. Jalen Ramsey wants to be paid. Jalen Ramsey's the only guy, one of the only guys that didn't get a contractual reward after Super Bowl 56. There was some chatter last year, training camp before the start of the season, about the possibility of Ramsey getting a new contract, even though he had four years left. He's got three years left. When you look at the payouts, you look at the market, you look at the salary cap, yeah, the, the Dolphins need to be ready to pay Jalen Ramsey sooner rather than later. And surely they did the trade with their eyes open, knowing that he's going to expect a new contract as part of his arrival with a new team, Chris. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you, you've been saying that. You know, I, I can't say that I've heard those type of rumors, but I'm not shocked to hear that. I mean, again, we're talking about a player who's really a, a legend of the league, you know, over the last eight years or so, ever since he got in. Uh, I mean, this is a big time move for them by the Miami Dolphins. You know, I think they're looking at it right now, and if you look at the Dolphins, they're going, "Wait, you know, uh, we got a we got a lot of the pieces we need to win football games or make a run into the playoffs." I mean, gosh, it, I mean, the way the the wild card game played out, you look at it and you go, "Man, if Tua played that game, I'm not so sure they wouldn't have beat the Buffalo Bills that day, right?" So they got the pieces now. Now I think it is about just a little, you know. Uh, the, the the icing on top of the cake and few specialized players here and there. We know that they'll hey all line. Maybe that's one other issue you look at. But corner, you know, Vic Fangio being the new D coordinator there, what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball, right? That was one of the weak spots of the team last year a little bit. Byron Jones not there. There's a lot of reasons that make sense. And then I think when you couple the versatility of Jalen Ramsey and what he can kind of do in the secondary – you know, that's where it's a, a great move by the Miami Dolphins to get that caliber of player. And again, I, I got a little dra dragged in the, the mud here and social media where I don't think he's a top three, four, five cover island corner anymore, but I think he's a top secondary player because he's got safety, nickel, can play in the box almost like a linebacker. He's great that way. And uh, that's where it's unbelievable they got a player of his caliber for, for a third round pick, Mike. And especially when you look at the payout over the next three years. And again, yeah. I suspect this to change. $17 million this year, $18.5 million in 2024, $19.5 million in 2025. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to have to adjust that contract. Um, especially, And when you consider that they got it for just a third-round pick and Hunter Long, it, it makes them – you know, it's a balance. It's a scale. We always talk about this. The more you give up in trade – the less you give up in money. The more you give up on money, the less you give up in trade. And uh, it's a far cry from what the Rams gave up to get him after he yeah. was disgruntled in Jacksonville in 2019. And they got several years uh, from Jalen Ramsey. But I – I mean, I, do you, I don't know well, if this is one. Do you guarantee it's a, you know, it's it, a long-term deal gets done here? Right, I mean, I, it it could be a two year rental. It could be that type of thing here. You know, I'll be I interested just think he gets to see more where money. it goes. Right, right, right. You think I, maybe I they'll think get a, the, the a, an is, extension and they give him a lump sum up front that maybe makes his salary cap number better, something like that. Yeah. And look, we've gotten to the point in the NFL where most of these deals are two or three year rentals anyway. There, right. there aren't that many. Yeah ultra long-term truly ultra long-term deals and those are reserved for the best of the best players because the team wants to have their rights in hand as long as possible but it usually now is two or three years and then we'll see and if there are years four five and six on the back end it's about managing the cap hit early and you know we're going to see that a lot folks get used to it a big contract a small cap number the first couple of years they know how to wave the magic wand work these deals break them down and make it happen that way and I suspect something that will reduce the cap charge for Jalen Ramsey this year from 17 and a half million but that will give him a lot of money or 17 million excuse me give him a lot of money give him the money that I think he was looking for from the Rams from the Rams perspective we're going to pay this guy again why I mean when you consider where the Rams are yes where the Rams fit and it's a concession by the Rams that they are 
transforming. Les Snead, the GM of the team, said last week that they're remodeling. Now, I think they're gutting the house. I mean, this is a hell of a remodel. This is a remodel so extensive they got to put the – you know, the permit up in the window uh, <laughs> to make sure that, you know, they're in compliance with all local ordinances because this is some heavy lifting they're doing. But the goal is, and Peter and I talked about this on Friday, when you've got a small handful of guys that throw your cap out of whack, it's imperative to have multiple draft picks in multiple years because it gets you players right. and you hope that, you know, you scratch off the lottery tickets and you get good players and you get them cheap. You have to that, – that, that's the only way to build a roster, Chris – when your hands are tied by Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, sure. you've got to have cheap young players to balance that out. Yeah, that's right. And they, they had to trim the fat a little bit. And, you know, unfortunately, Jalen Ramsey became part of that trim the fat conversation, not because he's not good anymore, but like because of the things we talked about. You know, yeah, he's getting to an age where, all right, we're not sure he's necessarily going to be at the top of his game here for a whole lot longer or one of those premier players there. Then you bring in the contract conversation, and, yeah, you look at the overall state of their team. Yeah, they, they have to retool it. They, they have to. And, again, they've shown the ability with mid-round picks to be extremely talented and have the eye to get those guys that are in the middle rounds and, oh, wow, he's starting safety. Whoa, it's, he's starting linebacker. I mean, so – you know, they've shown the ability to strike gold I, through the draft, even though they've been trading top picks, you know, away. Either way, there's been a lot of middle-round contributors to their football team. Um, so the Rams, yeah, they're, they're in a state of rebuild. I don't think there's any doubt about that. It's the tale of two te uh, teams right now. It's Rams in the state of rebuild, and it's Miami Dolphins in the, like, damn, We'll take the riches of Jalen Ramsey because we're in the midst of, we think, a Super Bowl run right now or a team that can be in the Super Bowl. And I, I, I don't doubt that. I mean, when you couple some of these players they got, and we again, their defense, statistically, maybe not great last year. I think we both agree it was dangerous. But, but we know the Byron Jones, he's gone, right, with some of his issues and his salary cap number. So you're going to have Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard and Javon Holland, who's an incredible safety. You know, they got a pretty good linebacking core. And then you talk about the Christian Wilkins and the Raekwon Davis and the Jalen Phillips and the Bradley Chubb up front. I mean, we're getting a team here that's, you know, very talented and top-heavy and has superstars, let alone, like we talked about to start the show, Mike, I mean, damn. They don't need anything on offense other than like one or two linemen just to help out the group. Maybe not even anything drastic there. They just might need some growth. So you look at this football team and the players and the difference makers they have. This is rounding out to be you know, one of the better rosters in the, in the sport, not only depth-wise, but talent-wise and top-end talent-wise. Back to the contract, Ramsey yeah. had $12.5 million of his salary this year already guaranteed of that $17 million. Apparently, Ian Rappaport has tweeted that the contract has been adjusted. Two years fully guaranteed. Well, most of this year was guaranteed already. Deal averages $20 million per year. It already averaged $20 million per year. This is one of those where, and I just sent a text to somebody who I trust will get me the actual details of any adjusted deal so we can see what kind of sweetener he really got and if that's going to be enough to placate him. Because, look, the cornerback market really has been stagnant in recent years as the cap keeps going up and up and up. And it hasn't gone up much since Ramsey set the standard with a five-year, $100 million contract. We'll see what kind of additional dollars yeah. he's going to get in the short term from the Miami Dolphins. That, that's where but I the was. The Dolphins are the new F them. Yeah. Go well, ahead. I was just going to say, Mike, that's where I was a little surprised where, you know, the contract conversation – you know, with, with where he's at in the state of his career, again, not not being a spring chicken, still being really good. And then, yeah, I mean, you look at the market and what he's doing right now. He has two years left. It's a little – his average is still, what, top two or three in the league, right, as far as his overall contract average. These two years right here, you said it right. As of spot rack, it's 18.5, 19.5. But it's not, like, egregious. I don't look at that and go, oh, man – he really does need a new deal. He's being underpaid in a big way there. 
You know, so you know, hopefully they gave, gave him a sweetener to you know make him happy, and I think it's a win-win for both sides if that if they can come to you know that type of agreement where he's happy, a little sweetener, and they can look at it and go, hey, here we go, we got two years, three years of like top-level talent across the board on our football team. The uh, Dolphins are the new F them picks team. They have only four selections this year, a two, a three, a six, and a seven. They lost their first round pick last year by virtue of tampering with Tom Brady and Sean Payton. So not a lot of picks, but they're doing what they can to make the team better. The two sides are still working through the final numbers of a revised Jalen Ramsey contract. There will actually be reduced cash in 2023 to help the Dolphins with their cap space more cash through 2024 and it will all be fully guaranteed at signing three years left on the deal now I don't know because I haven't had a chance to go back and forth on whether all three years will be fully guaranteed but the bottom line is he's actually taking fewer dollars this year for cap purposes but more guarantees three years remain no extension no shortening and uh, it's not done yet whatever they're going to do is not done yet so we'll see how that plays out for yeah. the Dolphins and Ramsey but it seems he's, like Ramsey's okay with it I mean, he's now, gotta look, be, I thought the guy I thought the guy the smoke was already out there that I that he right. wanted more yeah he got, I hear he you got more guarantee he has more security right but he's he's not gonna have more dollars it appears no maybe not more dollars but you know you're, you know the guarantee at this point of your career right when you're getting up there and the, you know that point hey it's it's nice to be sitting there and going wait I'm I'm sitting here and what you're what is he you're eight going into eight you eight eight nine and ten I got guaranteed big double digit, you know, cash payouts coming my way. Plus, I think on top of that, hey, he's at the point of his career where wow, he's he's on a on a winner. I mean, as a team that we're sitting here going, whoa, it's it's definitely one of the best rosters in football. I mean, it was a team, you know, if we went back to week 13 or 14 last year, We'd start to go, I, I, the Dolphins can make a play and make a serious run to go to the Super Bowl the way they were playing and how they looked. And then a few, you know, they hit a few bumps in the road. But So I got to think Jalen Ramsey is extremely happy to be in Miami, a new look, not being a part of the rebuild in, uh, in, in uh, Los Angeles, and then being with a defensive coordinator like Vic Fangio and then having a pass rush. That does make your job better, man. All things I think are are great for both sides when it comes to this agreement. And one of the things that helps Jalen Ramsey is he exits the state of California, returns to Florida. Yeah, that's right. Where in California the maximum individual tax rate is thirteen point three percent. In Florida, it is a Blutarski esque zero point zero. And I was reminded of something. The Deion Sanders said back in 2019 when Ramsey was traded to the Rams, he may not be there very long. Jalen is a businessman. I don't feel like the Rams are the Rams of old. Well, he was wrong about that. Thirdly, taxes. Taxes in California. The cost of living in California is not feasible to a guy who's just coming out of Florida. I don't know if this is a situation that's going to last over a year. This may be for right now. Well, it did last for three seasons, but it wasn't an ultra long term retire with the Rams type of a deal and he got his Super Bowl win and now this is all gravy at this point but but it is no further state income tax at least for the home games you still have to pay uh whatever the the rate is when you play on yeah. the road yeah no, that damn that that, that damn so, loophole yeah. that used to never go on yeah. just you know real quickly it, it, it's my understanding where you know again if you played for the Miami Dolphins you all your checks would be no state tax right but it's my understanding, Mike, and correct me if you've heard different or if I'm wrong. I think we have the Yankees to blame for this. I think it's the New York Yankees who got the vis started getting visiting teams up here in the New York area when they came to town and started going, no, no, we're going to tax them for that check they made in that four-day weekend when they came up here and played. And I believe that's where it started and started to filter all through major sports in, in our country at least. I look if if it's something that took that long, then somebody was asleep at the switch. Yeah, that's not an uncommon. No, I know it's not an uncommon reality. I mean, look, I I, I have an accountant for a reason, so I don't have to mess with it. But I know that work days in Connecticut, work days in West Virginia, the, that's all relevant to where you pay your your state income taxes. So uh, so anyway, uh, the bulk of the money that Jalen Ramsey makes now will not be taxed at thirteen point three percent on top of what. 
he pays in federal taxes, it will be nothing on top of his federal taxes. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.